Welcome back to Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. In this video, we're going through five vital tips that players need to know. And starting this one off, to craft the best gear possible, you're going to need to gather materials of the highest quality. And in order to do that, you need to be careful while you are gathering, as well as gathering during certain times of the day under certain weather conditions. If it's dry outside and you need it to rain, if it's day and you need it to be nighttime, then what you need to do is find a campfire and interact with it to pass time. So if we come up to here, there is a campfire and you'll see that we can use it to pass time. Each time you do this, if you open up your map, so if we have a look now, if you look at the bottom right, it says dusk and clear sky. So if we hold down X and we pass time, if we then go to the map, it's nighttime and it's foggy. So always keep an eye on your map and make sure that you are well aware of the time of day as well as the weather conditions because it's going to help out a lot when it comes to crafting in this game and gathering materials. And even though you will always get the same quality gear, if you gather materials the best way you can, and that's from both flora and fauna, you're going to increase the stat on the item. So for an example, over here, if they don't run off we have hexapedes and then if we manage to get close enough to them without spooking them or not even the hexapedes if we take a look here you have stern beasts and if you have a look at the heavy hide if we get that to pop up again you'll see that it says 15 to 19. so when it comes to the flora in the game by making sure it's pristine conditions, you don't damage it whilst you're gathering it, and also making sure that you have the right time of day and the right weather conditions, you're going to get the higher end of that item. And then when it comes to animals, if you manage to get a clean kill and it's merciful, so if you kill it via its weak spot and you use a minimal amount of arrows, that stern beast, as an example, is going to drop that item at 19 instead of 15. So it's really important to make sure your kills are clean on animals, make sure they're merciful. Then when it comes to the plants and stuff, make sure it's the right time of day, the right weather conditions, and make sure it's pristine condition. What that's going to do for you, getting the higher end of the gear, is, is going to let you get higher stats when you craft using those items. So with that stern beast, it showed that the items that were going to come off it were green. It doesn't matter if you do everything perfect, you're not going to get purple, so superior or exquisite. You will always just get fine gear. And then if you find, for an example, a plant that's exquisite, even if you damage it and everything is still going to come out exquisite, it's just going to change the stat numbers that you're going to get. So as an example, when it comes to the crafting, if I just go for the blazing longbow, you are going to see here that I have branches that have different numbers. I've got 21 and 23. That means that I have gathered these in different ways. I might not have had them pristine. It might have been the wrong time of day or something like that. So if I was to use the 21 and I put it with the seaweed that I've got, that's going to come out at a 32. Whereas if I come out of it and I go back in and I use the 23 alongside the 11 seaweed, that's going to come out at 34. So the better condition your items are that you're gathering, like your materials and stuff, the stronger your gear is going to be when you craft it. So make sure you're paying attention to everything that we've mentioned. Next up, we have full damage, and full damage is definitely a thing in Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. If you are high enough, you are going to die when you fall. You will eventually get access to a flying mount known as an Ikran that is going to save you if you're high enough because you have the ability to call it in midair. But anytime before you get hold of that mount, if you want to lower the amount of damage you take, you can either go and get the soft landing ancestor skill. So that can be found if we go over to the left. Soft landing is there, which is right in the center center of gossamer lakes or what you can do is you can look for these like trees which are known as the shade leaf canes i believe there may be a few different variants in the game but you can look for these they have gigantic leaves and if you jump and you land on the leaves these are going to break your fall so you don't take any fall damage at all so if you don't have your mount make sure you're looking for the big leaves if you do have your mount don't forget to call it in whilst you're falling so next up, we're going to be talking about Tarsu saplings. You do get the main Tarsu plants, which are going to give you your ancestor skills. But then there are Tarsu saplings, and they are something you need to keep an eye out for, as these are going to give you a free skill point, and you're going to need loads and loads of skill points to master the skill trees in the game. If we take a very quick look at the skills, you have a bunch that are going to be incredibly helpful. You can double the amount of cooking ingredients you get from hunting. 
You can deal 25% damage on your next attack within 10 seconds after killing an unaware target. And these are going to cost all the way up to four skill points each skill. So it's really important to get hold of these skills as they're going to really help you out in the game. So when it comes to Tarsu saplings, you can find them by either exploring the world and coming across them. Or sometimes you can talk to random Na'vi, which is why I've stopped here. Because you'll see there's a group of Na'vi. And if I go over and talk to the person, when they get up and start talking to me... You'll see that I've been given a random superior weaver bracelet, which is probably going to help me out in some way. I know it was just an armed guard mod, but you'll see like there, we've got 6% elemental resistance just by talking to these people. And sometimes they can give you the location of a Tarsu sapling. And then if you look on the screen, you're going to see this weird glowing circle. If I run away, if I try and get it to trigger again, so you'll see that the circle kind of lights up and it changes direction. What this is going to do is, is going to lead you to something interesting. So if we look around for what it may be, these are just night leaf trees. And if you have a look now, you'll see that the circle is kind of like disappearing, going in different directions and stuff. But if we get our Navi senses, so holding down my right bumper, you'll see there's something blue and there's a blade wing moth. And you'll see I've just obtained hidden fruit, which is exquisite rarity. And that was from interacting with that thing that popped up on the circle. It led us to the blade wing, and the blade wing led us here. Or the moths that come off the blade wing thing. I, I don't understand it fully, but that is the reward we got. So we covered the skill trees, the skill points. We had a look at the circle thing that pops up, and it shows you interesting things in the game. It will point you in the right direction of them and stuff. It, like, it will at least give you the general direction of where they are. And we also covered talking to the random Na'vi that are just roaming around the world, like sitting by lakes and things. But this here is a Tarsu sapling. If we interact with this and we touch it, that is a free skill point. Every single one of them is a free skill point. And if we go to our map and we actually show the collected things, you're going to see things like bell sprigs and stuff show up. And there's a Tarsu sapling there that I've collected. So these are going to show up on your map, so pay attention to your map. And whenever you come across a Tarsu sapling, go and interact with it because it's a free skill point. It's going to help you out when you're playing Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. Next up, when you are taking down RDA outposts, which is exactly what this is, you'll find them in the areas that are brown on your map. Those are areas that are polluted, and it's not always going to be a big base like this one. Sometimes it will just be these little drilling rig things. But when you are taking down the outposts, always look for the loot containers that have a red interface on the front of them. So you'll see here, I've opened this one. This was green. This will open on its own. And this one here was red. What you need to do is hold down your left bumper if you're on an Xbox controller and press Y. That is going to get out Sid. And then you can interact with it, bypass the security, and you're going to get really, really good bits of gear from them. And last but not least, if we take a look at the chest, basket, whatever you want to call it, thing that's in front of us, this is your stash. Make sure you are using your stash. I'm actually going to put this in there so that I've got it safe. You have a very, very small amount of inventory space. You'll see here, you can only carry seven bits of food or seven meals. You can have up to 25 materials. And then you get 50 pieces of gear. When it comes to the gear, I would contribute it to different clans and stuff just to get rid of the bits that you don't want. But when it comes to the materials, I would always put them in your stash. Make sure that you are not ever full up with your inventory. You can store 200 things in your stash. And when you go to Navi camps, you can find the stash and just keep everything that you want. You can keep it there. It frees up your carrying slots is only going to be beneficial. But not only that, the stash in this game is carried across every box that you find. So for an example, we are currently at the Resistance Headquarters. If I put something in my stash here, and I go to, for an example, the Home Tree, if I interact with the stash box that's at the Home Tree, all of my gear that I've put in at the Resistance Headquarters is going to be there as well. Your stash carries over no matter where you are. So it doesn't matter where you stash anything, any stash box you find in the game is going to let you sort out exactly what you've stashed. And just a quick bonus tip before we wrap this one up, do not ignore the side quests and exploration tasks and stuff in this game. 
because there will be a point in the game where you come across a main story quest and the combat strength requirement or recommendation is going to be higher than what you currently are. So make sure you're exploring, you're doing the side quests, you're gathering materials, you're hunting, you're crafting. Do all of that stuff to bring your combat strength up because there are some missions that require a stupid amount. I recently found an outpost that requires or is recommended a 20 combat strength and I'm like combat strength 7 or something like that. So I'm a long, long way off. But you can sometimes fall behind the main story quests as well. So I recommend doing the side quests, the exploration and things like that. But that was five vital tips that players need to know, in my opinion at least, in Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. And that is going to do it for this video. Let me know any other tips you might have in the comments. I will see you guys in the next one. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helped you out. Thank you for watching.